Hey there, my name is uh, Desiree Amuzu, and I am the host, currently director and producer of Liked Your Photo. Um, and my call sign on Instagram is Click Critic. That's C L I C K C R I T I C. Give me a follow, and you can find We Liked Your Photo as uh, on Instagram as well, which will post one or two videos as we post videos for this particular show on YouTube and Facebook. Last episode, we got a chance to speak with Jacob Fisher. Now that happened last year. Uh, Jacob Fisher, check out his Instagram if you can. That's uh, J-A-C-O-B dot Fisher, F-I-S-C-H-E-R. And uh, he is currently a Lexar ambassador, a Fujifilm photographer, and he's a Vanguard Pro ambassador. So check him out, he's a really great guy. Um, and anyway, I'll have a link at the bottom uh, for the show that happened last year. Essentially, the whole show is just about Instagram. You might as well call it the Instagram show. Although we're not getting paid or sponsored by Instagram, we're just fans of Instagram, and or at least I am, and the people that I work with are fans of Instagram. Uh, I love the photography. I'm, I, I'm, I'm an amateur photographer um, and hope to be a, a more active documentary uh, photographer and cinematographer. So and one way of doing it is by finding subjects to interview, people to profile, and really cool things to document. And Instagram is a great conduit for that. Now, I think it's interesting that there's a lot of pictures on here that I love, but there's a lot of pictures that I'm really confused about. And the, one of the first things I wanted to address is all the food pictures. I mean, there is a lot of food pictures out there. I don't know if you can see this pretty clearly. And it, to me, it all kind of blurs into yellow and red and, 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 and brown. And it just, it kind of just, it makes you hungry or feel sick. I've been eating an apple, just trying to be good because I'm getting hungry. That said, there is nothing wrong with having an Instagram for your business um, so that people can find you and see who you are and what you're about. And certainly it's a, start, a stepping stone if you're gonna have a bigger profile, say on Facebook or for your website. So I think Instagram is good. It's, it's free to use, might as well use it. But you can do a really good job and you can do a really poor job at your Instagram photos. Uh, and I think one place that has done a good job, I'm gonna finish this apple. Batula Burning uh, out of Prince George, British Columbia. I got a chance to go there earlier this year in January and got a chance to interview uh, Jessica Ballantyne. She's the currently the social media uh, photographer for um, and bartender for Batula Burning and Nancio's, which is their sister store or a sister restaurant. Sorry, correction. I got a chance to also interview a local food critic, Chris Diaz, who talked to me a little bit about uh, Batula Burning. Interesting thing about Batula Burning, a great restaurant, by the way, and if you travel through Canada, no one really thinks about stopping in Prince George, uh, but you know, there's some really great food there. And um, Batula Burning actually, oddly enough, suffered fire damage last year and they had to shut down and delay their opening and finally they opened up this year so it's really cool I, I didn't get a chance to eat there I ate at their sister restaurant Nancy O's but I never got a chance to eat at Batula Burning and uh, it was really great anyway what a great show to be able to, to do this to be able to interview them and get a little bit more of an experience uh, from Batula Burning and maybe to share it with you guys out there in Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram world. All right, so um, these are nice pictures, but the real thing tasted a lot better and it was a lot more fun to document in person. So I hope you enjoy the show. If you have ideas for me, for uh, some of my associates to go out and interview, or you wanna be on the show yourself, and if you're a local Instagrammer, as long as you've got an Instagram page uh, to begin with, um, give me a shout, leave a comment in the description, or check me out on Instagram and direct message me there. And um, I'll get back to you and believe me, I'll, I'll come out and interview you. I'm sure it'll be a blast. All right, that's it, enjoy the show. You think there would be some kind of super shoot to get you from one end to the other? What do you mean? Like some kind of secret passage you can move yeah, from one. Yeah. You have to come secret outside outside. and back in. You think there'd be some kind of shuttle? Maybe a zip line? Who says there isn't? Oh! That was Garrett. What's his last name again? 
Sorry, Garrett. Feder, Feder, Key, Feder, Feder. Funny it's, thing. It's a unique name. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to spell it out and maybe say it later. <laughs> sure. I saw a video. I saw a video of him on uh, CBC, and so that's why I knew it was him. So ah. when I went up to him, I was like, yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. Exactly. So um, in case you wonder why I'm rambling along here, um, I'm talking to. Let me see if I'm in focus right now. There I am. I'm speaking to Chris Diaz, and he is lives in Prince George. He is well-known local uh, writer and a food critic. Am I, am Three, I, two of those is true. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, which ones? We'll, is, we'll, which leave, ones, we'll which leave it. We'll leave it up to judgment. I, I definitely am a writer. I definitely am a food critic, whether or not I'm well known. I mean. Okay. So he's a humble food critic in Prince George, who's talking about some really great food out here in Prince George. And now the show is about Instagram. Well, Chris, do you have a, do you have an Instagram? <coughs> no, I don't have an Insta Instagram. I. <laughs> I'm a Facebooker and I have and I'm a Tumblr and I will get into Instagram at some point tonight. Well, at, at any rate, um, he's still here to talk to me about this awesome restaurant. Now it's cold out here and come to Prince George and tonight for whatever reason it looks really busy. There's a lot of cars out here, but well, Third um, Avenue is the street. And, you know, it, it, we don't. It's not, I wish it could be a walking street. It's not a walking street. It should be a walking street. But Third Avenue is becoming Third and Fourth is becoming kind of the hub yeah. of the nightlife. Yeah. Now it used to be the part where there would be nightclubs, and there still is one right across the street. There right. is a nightclub right across the street. But this is becoming the epicenter for the culinary side of town. Yeah. Now there are other areas too, but when you have four of the best restaurants in town, all within walking distance down this strip, it ends up becoming. Uh, it should be a walking street. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Some good parking, mind you. Right. Yeah. And you know what? Like, if you're somebody who's traveling throughout Canada, you're going to stop in Prince George at some point. Prince George is uh, a lot of people kind of reject, in, living in town, have rejected that it is a tourist town because most people pass through us. Right. They don't stop. And so there was always this negative opinion of our social scene, our culinary scene, our tourism scene. And just in the last few years, as the more how do I put this piece of conservative or rednecky views have started to fade. Yeah. The youth, people who say to get roots here, are starting to prove that that's not true, and yeah. that there is that scene, there is that passion, yeah. and that we can measure up to towns of our, of our size or larger, say like Victoria or Kelowna or Kamloops, absolutely Kelowna and Kamloops. Yeah. And it's starting to show in just the last three or four years, yeah. we've seen businesses appear that you would never see in this town 10 years ago. And you know, and, and I think that the cool thing about the fact that it's really cold out here is that when we go it's inside, really <laughs> it's freezing. I'm wearing, I'm wearing this hat just because I'm bald. That's the only reason I'm wearing this hat. <laughs> All right. Well, it, uh, for me, for me anyway, yeah. I, I, I know that it's warm inside. It is. And it's going to taste great. Yeah. Well, there's an oven in there that cooks on 900 degrees, the surface of Venus. Wow. Right. And now, then, I read something actually on your review. Yeah. So tell me about the wood. So, well, the batula is actually the wood, and it's, it's able to keep that temperature, but it's it's as much as the wood as it is the oven itself. I mean, now you can almost kind of see it through the window in yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, I call it Klaus, by the way. It's a nickname <laughs> I've given it because it looks like a German pickle helm. I don't know if you really know, you know what a German pickle helm is. You know, it's, a little, it's a little conical oh, yeah. with a little... Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. So it looks like a German pickle helm, so I call it Klaus. No one else does, so it's just me. So that's the thing I'm, I'm making it happen. But so it's 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 the wood fire. It's the temperature that that thing can get to. It never cools down. Never. It'll get down to maybe 400 to 300 degrees when you take the when you yeah. scrape out the ashes. It'll look cooler in the night. In yeah. the morning, throw it back in there, get it back up to temp, yeah. and you're good to go. But it never cools down ever. It took him a month just to cure this thing so it could handle those temperatures. Wow. This is a classic Italian style. You see these all around New York or all around Chicago, which is like. The, the mecca of pizza. If you check out their Instagram, it's, an, it's a unique name, Batula Burning or Nancy O's, you're gonna see some fantastic pictures of the food. Now, pictures don't tell you anything, right? Uh, they tell you something, but they don't really tell you about the experience when you're here. And especially if you're traveling through Canada and you stop through Prince George, I don't know, there's something really unique again about having some great food and some great feel especially during the winter. Like this is the place, to me, this is the place to visit in the winter. Of I, all I, the well, things. There are lots of me. restaurants, but this place obviously, I mean, oh, there are a lot of places that are warm. Don't worry about that. It's yeah. not like every, every, every <laughs> other place is an ice box. What kind of photos do you like to look at when you see food on any kind of media? Yeah. Why would you like a photo? I like a photo if I can, if I can tell it's food. That's the first thing. <laughs> 
a lot of times you get these, I mean, I've been to artsy yeah. places, I'm sure you have as well. Yeah. And I've been to places where you look at it and go, that's beautiful, but is it actually edible? Yeah. And that's the one thing. I want to be able to recognize it as food. Yeah. I, I love the, art, the artistic presentation yeah. of food. Yeah. I don't want to have to fight that presentation in order to enjoy the food. I've been yeah. in restaurants in Vancouver, a few places where I look at it and go, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> like you have these deconstructed Caesar salads and there's like a smear of sauce and then three leaves and the cross the bottom and you're like, how do I eat this? What's the yeah. process? And yeah. if I have to question, if I, if I need a manual, then it's not. Yeah. So what I like is stuff that's recognizable as being food, but takes it to that nth degree, that extra level. You can see the passion in the chef. To eat something that's delicious, pleasing, but still functionally as food. left a couple months ago so I kind of took over Nancio's and then offered to do the Tula as well. I kind of shouldered my way in it a little bit. I um, I definitely wanted to do it and I talked to Chelsea about doing it. Uh, she wasn't supposed to be gone until February of this year and then she decided to leave last minute on like an expedition onto Antarctica. So she left suddenly in 2016. Uh, so I, I approached Owen and Garrett and I said that I was interested in doing it. So. Like you want to engage people, you don't want just like like the darkly lit like cell phone photo and I'm like people are going to scroll right past that. Now I have a Fuji X-T10 as my body. I, I shoot usually between 2.2 and uh, 4. Like that's kind of like my bread and butter in here, especially with this, the lighting in the restaurant. There's always these nice, yeah. oh, like the nice creamy backgrounds and like yeah, yeah. At Nancy's we've started doing a little bit um, like features on new staff. So I'm getting into some portrait work um, and then I get to use my really nice portrait lens that I have, my 56. Yeah. And uh, I would love to do that here as well, like maybe just like feature, you know, staff and just, because uh, it's really nice to post pictures of food and like specials and everything, but uh, it's nice to engage people and like, you know, they see it on the Instagram, then they come in here and they see, hey, it's that guy from Instagram, he's our chef, or like, that's our bartender, or, like she was on Instagram, you know, so, and it's more engaging than always just seeing, I mean, people love pictures of food, but kind of just mixing it up with more like uh, maybe like funny or maybe more interesting. Yeah. I've always been, I just graduated university this year and I've never had a creative outlet. I was just talking to someone about this the other day and I've always been fond of photography but I've actually now just started exploring it and uh, I've been playing around a lot with like digital art. Uh, I have a really good friend actually, uh, she, works at, she works at Nancy's for a number of years, Rowan, and she does a lot of digital art and I've been Trying to get into that, like taking photography and then uh, making it really special in post and like making edits. I've been trying to get into some outdoor photography and then like uh, light photography. Uh, but I'm so new that it's it's nothing, and it would completely be for a hobby. There's one, you know, there's no one that I've like followed intently, and that like a lot of the Instagrams that I'm following right now personally that I keep with they're kind of like fat almost like they're not it's not a professional portfolio Instagram it's like um, this is one lady from Victoria and all of her and she's like nameless and it's all light photography and it, all these beautiful like silhouette photography and like it's incredible and I don't even know her name but it's I follow a lot of accounts like that that don't necessarily like lay claim to their and it's I think most of those people must be hobbyists otherwise because they don't have like their like information, like their emails, they don't have that. It's more just like a, they're just putting this artistic yeah. photography out into the Instagram, and like they, like they, no, they, they have like eighteen thousand followers, and there's like a, a girl from that no one knows from Victoria, and I know that eighteen thousand isn't Boys like, deal, but yeah. it's a lot, yeah. and I mean, like it's beautiful, and they're not taking credit for it. And I follow a lot of accounts like that because I think that's maybe where I, like I'm not really looking to get into professional photography. I just want to create things that people will look at and be like. That's awesome. That's really pretty. I like that. Is it like your photo? Oh, liked your photo. Liked your photo. Like liked your? Like I liked your photo? Like I liked. I liked your. 
<laughs> Is that where that came That's what it's called. It's called like your photo. Like your photo. Like, like. This name might not be working. It's called It's really loud in here. It's not. <laughs> I'm in the middle of uh, Osprey Village in Pitt Meadows, which is near Maple Ridge in British Columbia. And we just came and had some food at, or well, some tea at Stomping Grounds Cafe Bistro. Nice little place. I remember when it was getting built. This is a beautiful spot of British Columbia. And I'm here with DJ, photographer, uh, artist, uh, Brendan Pace. Sorry, is that a cool that I told the people your last name? Yeah. <laughs> and he's known as uh, DJ Chesto. And um, he, I met him at the Cactus Club uh, in Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley. And uh, started chatting about what he does because I thought it was kind of cool. But I realized he had an Instagram page and I, I was really into that and, and actually saw some really nice, uh, some nice photos and some nice artwork on that page so it just fits right in with the show, liked your photo.